Hey, Vision Chasers, it's Dr. Bird here with another social studies lesson for you today. Today, I'm going to discuss the Harlem Renaissance. Now, before we get started, I want to break down that term. Harlem is simple. That's obviously a place in New York City. Renaissance, now that word means to be reborn or renewed. And the word Renaissance uh, can also describe a period in Europe in which people started to go against and, and question their old ways of thinking. And so because of that, they started to express themselves differently because they had a, a new way of thinking. And a lot of amazing things came out of that time period. So it was in Harlem where many African-Americans started to uh, discover a, a pride in their blackness. And so they started to express themselves in different ways as well. So with that foundation being set, let's get started. So during the 1920s, many African-Americans, they would move from the South to the North in search of more opportunities and, and freedom from oppression. This was known as the Great Migration. Now this transition wasn't easy because there would also be riots and, and lynchings throughout the North as well. However, there would be brave, vocal African-American leaders seeking to secure more rights and protection for African-Americans. Some of these leaders would be uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, uh, Booker T. Washington, and James Weldon Johnson, just to name a few. Now, James Weldon Johnson, he would go on to write uh, what is now known as the Black National Anthem, which is Lift Every Voice and Sing. He also worked for the NAACP in order to stop the lynchings of African-Americans. Now, in the face of, of all these lynchings and a rise in the Ku Klux Klan membership, Marcus Garvey was a black man who encouraged other black people to be proud of who they are, the color of their skin. And he actually encouraged black people to go back to Africa because he believed that African-Americans would never, ever achieve the equality they deserved. So it was during this great migration that many African-Americans would find a home in Harlem. And according to my research, there were over 100,000 African-Americans living in this community. So by far, this was the largest black community in the United States at this time. Many people believe that Harlem was the black capital of America. A couple of the prevalent writers who came out of the Harlem Renaissance, one was Langston Hughes, and he was known for writing about the difficulty of African-American lives. Additionally, uh, Zora Neale Hurston, she wrote a lot of short stories and novels, again, about American life. And you may have heard of one of her novels, Their Eyes Were Watching God. That's a well-known one. Additionally, the performances were spectacular. African-American singers and actors would wow audiences. And even though African-Americans were discriminated against at this time, it was clear to everyone, including white people who sat in the audience, that African-Americans had a lot to offer. Adelaide Hall was one of these performers and she would perform for over 50 years. Let's listen in. So we have writers, we have performers, we also have artists. And as you can see on your screen, the, the, the art was, it was rich, it was vibrant, it was creative. Yeah, artists who produce paintings, they produce sculptures. And, and, and a lot of this artwork, they, they depicted, once again, African-American life. And as I was doing my research for this lesson for you, I came across a quote from Aaron Douglas, who was a popular African-American artist during this time. And here's his quote. He says, our problem is to conceive, develop, establish an art era. 
not white art painting black. Let's bare our arms and plunge them deep through laughter, through pain, through sorrow, through hope, through disappointment, into the very depths of our souls, of our people, and drag forth material, crude, rough, neglected. Then let's sing it, dance it, write it, paint it. Let's do the impossible. Let's create something transcendentally material, mystically objective, earthy, spiritually earthy, dynamic. And again, that quote has so much meaning to me because the artist, this is a black man and he has heard about or read about and experienced such discrimination just because of the color of his skin. And I admire that throughout all of that, he is passionate about his work. That is so amazing. And we are truly blessed that we have his work to admire. Now, most memorable of all from the Harlem Renaissance was the birth of jazz. Now, quickly, let me say, jazz was not born in the Harlem. It is widely accepted that jazz was born in New Orleans, but eventually it made its way to Harlem. And the Cotton Club. The Cotton Club was a famous club in Harlem in which many, many jazz artists and, and entertainers, they came through and performed. Some of these performers include Duke Ellington and his orchestra, Louis Armstrong, and last but not least, there's so many, there's so many artists, but the one last person that I want to mention here is Cab Calloway. Cab Calloway, this guy is amazing. And I just want you to watch this clip of him performing. Folks, I'm going down to St. James Infirmary to see my baby there. She stretched out on a long white table So sweet, so cold, so fair Let it go, let it go, God bless the road Whoa, 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 whoa Wherever she may be She can search this whole wide world over But she'll never find Another sweet man like me When I die Bury me in my straight leg Richard. So there you have it, Cab Calloway. Pretty awesome stuff. And it's cool because as I was doing the research for this lesson, I actually found that it is actually Cab Calloway who's credited with being the one to come up with the moonwalk. And he was doing it back in the 1930s. Now he called it something different, but I thought that that was interesting. And definitely as I was watching some of his other videos and the, the flair that he brought to his performances, I could see uh, shades of James Brown, uh, the recently late great prince and definitely I, I saw a little Michael Jackson there as well in his performances so uh, a lot of these people that came out of the Harlem Renaissance they had a huge influence on the uh, on the stars and, and artists who would come after them and even some of the artists that you're enjoying today um, also, I just want you to keep in mind that we just barely scratched the surface of the Harlem Renaissance. There are so, there were so many different people who uh, showed off their skills and, and made up the Harlem Renaissance. I definitely couldn't name them all in, in this very brief lesson, but I encourage you uh, to check that out. So in summary, the Harlem Renaissance was about uh, a lot of black artists uh, expressing themselves uh, being comfortable in their blackness and, and talking and, and, and sharing information about their culture. Just awesome time. And so I encourage you to uh, do more research on your own. Well, that is our social studies lesson for the day. Thank you so much for watching. Check the Vision Chasers website for more tips and tools as you chase your vision of success. Feel free to download the worksheet that accompanies this video to further your knowledge about the Harlem Renaissance. And until we meet again, please keep chasing the vision. Bye.